This is the Trump Breaking News Network. Here's what's happening. Who's behind the Portland riots? 60% of arrested anti-Trump protesters were from out of state, didn't vote. By Zero Hedge. Two months ago, Charlotte police confirmed that 70% of those arrested during the riots were from out of state. 18 months before that, as the riots flared in Ferguson, George Soros spurred the protest movement through years of funding and mobilizing groups across the U.S., according to financial records reviewed by The Washington Times. And now, amid more headlines of Soros' involvement, KGW reports that more than half of the anti-Trump protesters arrested in Portland were from out of state. At least 69 demonstrators either didn't turn in a ballot or weren't registered to vote in the state. KGW compiled a list of the 112 people arrested by the Portland Police Bureau during recent protests. Those names and ages, provided by police, were then compared to state voter logs by Multnomah County elections officials. Records show 34 of the protesters arrested didn't return a ballot for the November 8th election. 35 of the demonstrators taken into custody weren't registered to vote in Oregon. 25 protesters who were arrested did vote. KGW is still working to verify voting records for the remaining 17 protesters who were arrested. In other words over 60% of the arrested protesters in Portland were not local voters dismayed by the election of Donald Trump. And so, just as in Ferguson and Charlotte, we see what appears to be professional agitators popping up at key times to encourage social unrest, which as we recently detailed were funded from George Soros MoveOn.org, all of which perhaps explains why these professionals were so adamant not be filmed or caught on tape as Gateway Pundit reports, reporters in Portland, Oregon were attacked by anti-Trump rioters Sunday night, according to Portland police. The protesters also handed out leaflets warning people to not record the riots. One reporter, Mike Bivines, who was threatened by the pro-Hillary mob decided to not report the threats but changed his mind after the announcement by police that a news crew had been attacked. Bivens is student at Portland State University and was reporting for PSUS Pacific Sentinel. Some protesters attacked a film crew, bottles being thrown at police, distractionary bank devices being used to effect arrests. Fellow PSU student Andy Ngo who writes for PSU's Vanguard student newspaper posted an image of the threatening leaflet. The text of the leaflet reads, Don't snitch, ever. Put down your cell phones and participate. Do not help the police in identifying persons engaged in illegal activity. Don't post protest videos to social media. A few things you can do. Join, celebrate, show your rage. Yell fuck the police. Drink some water and chill. Share food. Collaborate. Find one another. Keep people safe from physical harm. Stop filming. Consider this a warning. Bivens said he also was threatened on Twitter via direct messages. Bivens also noted a film crew camera had been destroyed by rioters. Bivens posted video of Portland police dropping in to clear out a group of rioters, wait for it. Being a student reporter, Bivens ran away from the story, cussing up a storm, instead covering it, but he captured the intensity of the police action. On Thursday night a Portland news crew was attacked by rioters with a baseball bat. On Saturday night another news crew was attacked. Talked with our cameraman. Thankfully, he didn't get hurt. Q media outrage if these were Trump supporters. This has been the Trump Breaking News Network. Please subscribe and share to stay up to date on the latest news about our president. Be informed.